Well, Caitlin Fitzgerald, we've uh, not only enjoyed having you on today, but we've had so many Masters of Sex co-stars of yours, Michael and Lizzie and Allison and Teddy, so uh, you can tell we enjoy the show. How did you come to be on this uh, show for Showtime? Um, the old-fashioned way. I auditioned and uh, met with the producers first and then met with the director and um, then was really nervous and then got the part. It's a unique show, and I think your part is unique because, of course, a lot of it is set at the university and at the hospital, but then you have this home life for Dr. Masters. Talk about that relationship between the two of them, especially as we see them in this first this uh, first year that we joined their lives. Yeah, I mean, to me, the Masters relationship in the first season sort of... Um, I guess they, they both discover things about each other, uh, the other that they didn't know and um, that sort of put a crack in the relationship that may or may not be able to be repaired. I mean, they both, they both lie to each other, possibly for the first time, and, um, and I think that it forms a chasm between them. For someone, uh, for Dr. Masters to be so heavily involved in sexuality research, relation, relationship research, one of the unique aspects of this show is that you see that even though he's incredibly bright on those subjects, he's not so bright on that at home. Indeed, yeah. I, I think about that a lot. You know, Libby Masters to me is, is a woman who has all kinds of desires, uh, both emotionally and physically, and here she is married to a man who conceivably could really help her <laughs> and uh, just can't for whatever reason. It's, it's too vulnerable for him. Of course, the big lie early in the season is that they're trying to have a baby, and he's convinced her that it's her fault that they, that they can't. But mm -hmm. uh, in, in fact, uh, he uh, knows secretly, and I think you find out later on in the season that uh, that it's him that's the problem. What What did you think about that particular storyline? Um, I mean, that seems to me the, the sort of beginning of the end of the Masters relationship, uh, and I. I don't think Libby knows that entirely, but that's a it's a pretty big betrayal, I would say. I mean, I think at that point she sort of she recognizes that the dream fantasy she'd had about her perfect marriage is is really not true, and um, she's going to have to take matters into her own hands to get what she wants. One of the great episodes for you this season. Well, there were several, but one I wanted to focus on first was the episode Catherine. Uh, I think maybe. Yeah. It might be my favorite of the whole season because there's so much going on there, and that's where you have the uh, the miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Talk about that one a little bit, and just when you first got that script and saw what was coming up. Um, I mean, I just wept when I read it. It, it was uh, it was a really hard one to shoot, and um, and I did a lot of research and and sort of on like a lot of chat rooms for women who've lost babies, and I mean, it's just. It's the, it's the biggest nightmare there is, you know, to lose a child, and um, I felt honored and terrified to have to tell that story. Another one that I really liked was where you go to Florida. Uh, yeah. We see a whole other side of your character in that episode, mm -hmm. and of course, Dr. Masters, you know, thinks he's going on vacation, and he just can't stay away from the hospital. What, yeah. uh, what did you think about that particular one? Um, I loved shooting that episode. It was the first time I think I've I acted uh, being drunk, and um, it was exciting to sort of, as you say, explore that other side of Libby, and um, and it was great to work with those guys, those actors. What is it like for you? You have most of your scenes with Michael Sheen. What what is he like being an actor across from you? Oh, he's horrible. Just a monster. <laughs> no, he's wonderful. Michael is. Uh, is great. You know, we have such a nice relationship, and um, we laugh so much together. So it's always it always is startling when when the director calls action, and suddenly he's really cold and shut down. It, it takes me a second to remember where we are. Yeah, just uh, when we interviewed him, and I've seen him in other interviews, especially like with somebody like Craig Ferguson, and he's so uh, bubbly and bright and uh, intelligent and all those kind of things. And then here, I mean, it really is truly a great acting job because he's he's just a stone faced in a lot of scenes. I mean, he's just so, um, uh, has no inner, it looks like he has no energy even in his body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. It's, uh, it's like trying to get blood from a stone so frequently and um, 
thankfully he's such a lovely guy, as you say, um, when the camera's not rolling. So, because if he was, if he was actually like Doctor Masters, it would be torture <laughs> to shoot the show. If he was like Doctor Masters, I don't think he would have ever become an actor. That's probably true. That is a <laughs> good. <one. laughs> Another actress that you worked with on this show uh, plays your mom. is one of my favorite character actresses, and that's Anne Dowd. What was she like to work with? Anne is just the loveliest, warmest, most wonderful. Actually, in the episode, Catherine, the miscarriage episode, she um, just having her there, and I remember there was one moment where she sort of like touched my face or something, and it felt so maternal, and I just wept and wept. I mean, she's she is just the greatest. Her character does not take Dr. Master. She's, she's one of the few that will actually speak back to him. It's true. Mothers do that, I, su I suspect. Now, we talked to Teddy about this yesterday. His character and some characters are composites of real people, but they're not actually specifically one person. But, of course, yours, you are a, uh, yours was a real person, uh, Libby Masters and, and Dr. Masters, Virginia Johnson. Did... Did any of the family have input to you or the producers on what what they were like, what they would like to see, not see, that kind of thing? I'm not sure how involved the family's been. I don't think very involved at all. I certainly haven't spoken to anyone. And um, I think we've taken a lot of liberties with Libby, uh, actually, because the book that the show's based on, Masters of Sex, um, doesn't have such a huge amount of information about Libby, so we, we felt like we had a little more latitude there. I would imagine, I mean, if they wanted to, if they even wanted to be involved, they would certainly want to provide just even background information, just, just you know, how they walked, how they talked, what they were like, those kinds of things. Yeah, it's, I, I'm torn because I would love, you know, it is, you do feel a weight playing someone, you know, a real person, um, and you want to get it right, uh, but at the same time, we are, we are fictionalizing this story so um, you know and I feel I feel a certain ownership now of this woman <laughs> in a weird way so it would be it would be interesting to hear what they have to say and working in the 1950s that has to be I think if I was an actor that would be one of my most the, the, the things I would look forward to the most is doing something period something with the clothes and the and and just all the surroundings and stuff what's it been like for you visiting the 50s um, I love it. I love it. I Nothing gives me greater pleasure than the days that we shoot big party scenes and there's all these background um, actors in 50s clothes and it really feels like you've stepped through time. Um, you know, it is, it's frustrating, I will say, to play a woman in the 50s with all of the restrictions that come along with that. There are days when I play Libby and I just wish that she could scream a lot, <laughs> um, but she can't. I would imagine it's strange uh, on a behind-the-scenes look when you've got all you know a whole cast of people in their fifties all on their you know on their cell phones behind the scenes. It's true. It's totally true. Eating like Fritos and drinking cokes and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It is. It's weird. It's it's great though, and and we have such an amazing team who do the costumes and the set design and um, who provide all the beautiful vintage cars. So we got really lucky that way. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, your career has been similar to Teddy's, and we talked about this yesterday on his chat, in that a lot of TV guest roles, you know, you're looking for that series, it's going to be a hit. Um, talk about just that, that, that career path where you're going up for a lot of jobs, you're doing a lot of day jobs, week jobs, and then suddenly you get to be on a, a hit series. Yeah, I mean... There's no way of knowing as you go along what will possibly happen, and uh, you just have to sort of cross your fingers and hope that that it will all come to pass. And I feel um, just enormously blessed to be on the show, and and uh, and yeah, and at the same time, you know, when I first read the script, I just had this feeling like this is my part. There's some parts that you just know in some deep way <laughs> that they're meant to be, and this feels like one of them. What as people got to see this first season last fall, as your friends saw it, your family saw it, um, and what kind of comments did you get back? What what kind of feedback? Um, you know, the most exciting thing about it actually was that uh, people wanted to have a real like conversation about the show, um, and it it seemed they didn't just want to talk about the sex or the costumes. You know, it was it was really like it became sort of political in a way, and that 
was really exciting to me. The Emmy Awards are coming up this summer in terms of uh, voting, and that's we're an awards website, so we love to talk about those kinds of things. You'll be in the on the drama supporting actress ballot. Um, yeah. If you get nominated, well, uh, I know it's embarrassing, but we have to talk about these things. Um, what if you get nominated in July? You're going to have to pick one episode from this season that you feel like was your the best episode for Libby, the best showcase for you. Would it be one of the ones we talked about, the Florida one, or Catherine, or maybe something else? Probably Catherine, I would imagine. That seems to be sort of the sort of pinnacle moment for Libby in the first season. What about that one really appealed to you? What, what, as you read the script and then actually did the uh, the work that particular week, what, what about it um, made that one of your favorites of the year? Well, it's strange what we do as actors. We're like weird masochistic creatures because. And I remember thinking this while we were shooting Catherine, because we shot all of the hospital stuff while, the, while Libby's losing the baby in one day. So it was about um, 12 hours of me crying in a bed. And I remember thinking at one point, like, this is an insane thing to do for a living, like lying here weeping. And, you know, it's weird that when I got that script, I was like, oh, this is such rich, amazing material to get to play, and yet it means I'm going to have to feel all these horrible, dark things. So... I, I can't quite figure out why why we do what we do as actors, but that's um it was it was an amazing thing to play and also incredibly hard and challenging. When you have to do something like that over and over and over again, is that is that really the most difficult part as an actor? Um, it yeah, it can be. I mean, you I find that once you sort of get into the emotional groove, you can kind of. Um, ride it, but yeah, it's it's exhausting, <laughs> it can be. I remember reading one time, even beyond that, some one of the actors on one of the talk shows said, you know, they uh, said, I would do the acting for free, they're paying me for sitting and waiting around. That's true, yeah, it, it feels like as an actor that um, the work actually is just the slog of trying to get the job and auditioning, and once you get the job, that's just, it's like vacation, it's just the pleasure part. Give us a glimpse into season two. Last first season aired in the fall. Mm -hmm. Season two is going to start here in July, so it's not far off at all. And Teddy was telling us you're basically at the halfway mark in terms of shooting, uh, mm -hmm. without giving anything away that that might make your producers mad. Just give us a glimpse into what what's what's coming up. Um, well, we left off season one. Uh, Libby's just had her baby, which has sort of been you know the thing that she wanted more than anything. Um, in the first season, and, and I think she was really convinced that it was going to bring her all this joy and, and finally a feeling of family. Um, and season two, we kind of discover that that's not entirely going to be the case. In real life, how many children did they have together? Two, a boy and a girl. Uh, and I, I don't remember, what was the baby, uh, a boy or a girl that was born at the end of last season? A boy. Okay, good, good. Hey, one more question. Uh, looking over your career, uh, the one that jumped out at me the most was it's complicated. Um, working with Meryl Streep, how was? Um, I'm, I know it was great, but I mean, give me give me a little more than that. I mean, what what was it like working with Meryl Streep? She's terrible. She's unprofessional. She's like mediocre talent. Uh, no, Meryl was amazing. She was amazing. That was my first real film, and. Um, and I made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> and she was very kind and understanding, and uh, yeah, she's just, I mean, she is the greatest for a reason. I, I, you know, you're a professional, you know what you're doing, but I mean, I'm sure you, even on a show like this, but even back to that particular movie, I mean, you learn a lot, don't you? Uh, just it's, a, it's an ongoing, never-ending, lifelong process of learning how to do this. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's one of the greatest parts of all, is that with each job comes a new thing to discover and a new challenge. Well, listen, we're looking forward to season two this summer. Good luck on the Emmy ballot, and uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye.